welcome to Cardinalese's second virtual Christmas Arts Festival. Unfortunately, we can't be together in person this year, but we promise to deliver a fun and festive night full of beautiful art, lovely music, dance, and a little bit of drama. So sit back, grab your hot chocolate and popcorn, and enjoy the unique and talent that Cardinalese students have to offer. We hope you enjoy the show. Merry Christmas! In the name of the Father, and in the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, during this third week of Advent, let us remember the good news of Jesus' birth has the power to bring us great joy this Christmas season. Our joy isn't dependent on what's going on in our lives, in the world, or the people we are with. It doesn't depend on the gifts we give or the gifts we receive under the tree. No earthly thing can give us complete joy. Our joy comes from you. That joy that flooded the hearts of the shepherds, the angels, the wise men, the host of heaven, and Mary and Joseph is the joy that still has the power to overwhelm our hearts with rejoicing. God, bless the many talented artists who contributed to tonight's arts festival. May they continue to see the value in their strengths, work through their weaknesses, and use their talents for good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We begin by acknowledging the land and our responsibility to care for and respect all that creation gives to provide us with life. This land upon which we live, work, and sustain ourselves is the ancestral and treaty lands of the Michizagig, Anishinaabek, also known today as the Mississaugas of the Credit, the rightful caretakers and title holders of this land. We also recognize that this land is rich in pre-contact history and relationships, which includes the Anishinaabek, and Anguahongwe, and since European contact has and continues to become home for the indigenous and non-indigenous peoples. As a responsible community, we believe all people are sacred and possess inherent and immeasurable worth and dignity. Colonialism displaced and dis dispossessed indigenous peoples of their ancestral lands and continues to deny their basic human rights, dignities, and freedoms. We are committed to the Sacrament of Reconciliation, making reparations and fulfilling our treaty obligations, duties, and responsibilities as outlined in the Gudaganana Dish with One Spoon Wampum. This treaty governs and affirms that we actively maintain mutually beneficial relationships and collectively respect and care for the land, water, animals, and each other in order to guarantee a good life for our future descendants.
newbies, this is your orientation speech. The Christmas countdown is ticking away and we're running out of time. So prick up those pointy ears and listen up. My name is Inspector Brumley, elf number 8425. And I've delivered this speech for over a thousand years. So if I look burnt out, it is not your imagination. The number one rule here at Santa's workshop is when the fat man is on the floor, look busy. Everything after that is pretty easy. As you can see, this is the main area where all the magic happens. However, when you're working at the conveyor belt, make sure that you don't wear jingle bell sleeves. Last year, Happy lost an arm. He's not so happy anymore. And over here, we have the stables. Yes, the reindeer fly, but their poop falls to the ground just like the rest of us. So you can expect to be on Nugget Patrol for the first few weeks. And if Sneaky the Elf offers you some fudge from the stables, do yourself a favor and say no. Let's see here, I've got some basic tips, common sense really. First of all, don't stare at Rudolph's nose. He hates that. It's red. Get over it. Let's see here, if you see a disoriented talking snowman that says, Happy birthday! Just smile and nod politely. He's senile, but ultimately harmless. Let's see. Don't listen to rumors about Mrs. Claus and the Easter Bunny, and don't mention those rumors to Santa. Especially after he's had two glasses of eggnog. Trust me, I know from experience. Alright elves, let's get to work! My Nicky Poo. No, dear Nick. No, dear husband. No, dear Chris. Dear Saint Nick. No, dear Mr. Claus. I'm so sorry it has come to this. We've been married for over a dozen centuries and yet somehow we've grown apart. Maybe it's the fact that you spend more time with your reindeer than you do with me. Or that you don't feel complete unless you were down in your workshop slave driving those poor elves. The rest of the world sees you as a constant beacon of merriment, but they don't know the real cause. Quiet, solid, a workaholic who drinks too much eggnog. And what about that bowl full of jelly you call a stomach? Maybe you should spend less time making a list and checking it twice and more time on the treadmill. <sighs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to lash out. None of these things really matter. They aren't why I'm leaving you. The truth is, I've met someone new. It doesn't matter who. All that matters is how I feel when we spend time together. Hiding Easter eggs and decorating chocolate bunnies. All that matters is that we're happy. And I truly hope that you can find happiness too. Maybe with the Tooth Fairy. She's always had a thing for you. You have my blessing. Goodbye, my husband. I'm leaving this note next to a glass of milk and some cookies for old time's sake. Farewell. Love, Mrs. Claus. Dear Mrs. Claus, Ever since you left me for the Easter Bunny, my life has become utterly meaningless. Without you, the North Pole truly is the loneliest place in the world. Without you by my side, there's been no one to keep me up on my diet. I've gorged upon cookies and milk. I even stole Rudolph's carrots. I gobbled up the gingerbread house next door. The neighbors are furious. I've gotten so big, the reindeer have developed back problems. Thanks to me, the sled now exceeds its maximum capacity. I don't think I'll be able to clear the Rockies this Christmas Eve. I can't stop drinking. 
I've been going to Eggnog Anonymous meetings, but they just aren't helping. And I hesitate to mention how devastated the elves have been. <sighs> so, as you can tell, without you, my life is ho ho horrible. Please come back to me. I don't care if you're naughty or nice. There's no one else I want underneath my mistletoe. Love, your Nikki Boo.
well, maybe not that big, but you know what I mean. So anyways, I was going upstairs to look for my dad's big sweater for my Christmas party, and there I saw a box in the closet all neatly wrapped up. I got closer, and on top was my name. Yes, mine. To Melissa. This had to be an Xbox. I couldn't wait for Christmas. So on Christmas morning, I woke up extra early. I was ready to get this new Xbox with new controllers. I reached out and ripped the paper as fast as I could. And inside was a box. And when I opened that box, guess what was inside? Another box. And in it, another box. At this point, I knew this had to be a great gift because who goes through all this trouble wrapping a gift that isn't great? Then a few boxes later, I knew I had to be down to my last box. I was surprised. It was quite small. I thought it could be money or an Xbox gift card. So I opened it and what was inside? A pair of socks. Seriously? I thought I'd be getting something better than things that just get smelly. Mom and Dad looked at me like I should love it. What were you expecting? Aren't they great? I didn't know how to respond. Thanks, I said sarcastically. And then I noticed my brother started to laugh. And so were my parents. Can you imagine? How mean can they get? I started to run through my room, but my dad stopped me. Just look inside the socks. I didn't really want to, but Christmas was already ruined. So I shoved my hand inside of one of the socks. It was a gift card for an Xbox. Yeah, I was happy to get it, but they didn't have to make me cry practically beforehand. Let me see you. Traila, a toda tu amiga que le bailando me la pista que modele. Hagamos que la música nos lleve. Dije que el bajo suene.
Dying, breathing, dying, silver stone, 
Attention my fellow elves, I stand here today as the leader of the Order of the North Pole Elves and I urge you to say no to Santa. No more working from sunup to sundown without as much as a snickerdoodle break. I mean, who does Santa think we are? Robots? No, we are elves and we write. Tinsel, remember that time when he forced you to clean up after Dasher, when he got into that barrel of chocolates? Oh. Cleaning chocolate poo is NOT on the job elf description. It's nazi. There was that time when he forced you to let Mrs. Claus use you as a mannequin for those dresses she was making for that little girl. I mean, how humiliating was that? <laughs> what the fuck along was he thinking? And you know what else? He forces us to wear these ridiculous Pinocchio outfits and, and makes us sing while we work. He's and he never helps us. He just sits on a big fat butt watching the Weather Channel. And on Christmas Day, he takes all the credits. Look, Santa came! Ooh, look what he got me! How do you know he wanted this? Listen up, children of the world! Santa is NOT the one who makes your train sets, or your dolly houses, or your walkie-talkies. It was us, the elves of the North Pole. We did that work. Santa didn't. He's just a big fat guy with a wiggly belly that basically sits on his butt all day and only works one day ye a year. Huh, nothing but a glorified delivery man in my opinion. What, what, what's that? Santa is, where? Oh, I see the whole Thanks for watching everyone and Merry